Now along here, what they've done is they've put the fabric underneath with the back tacking. Then they put the webbing on top. I'm going to see if I can clean that up a little bit because the cushion goes in from the back forward. I've decided not to mess with it because it's really hard up under there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to pop that down against the back and push all of this fabric down underneath it, like that. Put that in at an angle. This might not work as well as I'd hoped, actually. This staple gun is not as good as my last one, which really irritates me. Once I've put the back in, I'm just going to pull it forward, fold the top over, and secure that in place. Pull it as tight as possible. You just don't want it too far forward because you've got to secure the other fabric in front of here. I've cut either side of the arm because I might need to push the fabric down inside here and secure it underneath. I'm not sure yet. And along this side, fold it over and pull it back and secure it. Unfortunately, this staple gun is not going to go where I want it to go, but I'll put it as far as I can. And then I'm going to come down into this corner. I'm just going to fold the fabric back so it's out of this join here. And I'm just going to pull it out and into this corner and secure it as far back as I can. That's annoying when that happens, but I can get it in from this angle. Now I'll do the other side. And again, I'm just going to cut down on either side like that and then pull that on both sides of here and secure. Now it's secure, I'm going to do the same on the other chair, so they're both identical. The back of the seat cushion is 22 inches. I'm going to measure this, which is 27 and a half. Nice thing about this kind of measuring tape is you can fold it. Pop that there. At 13 and 3 quarters, I am going to put my centre mark like that. I'm layering the seat cushions. It's 11 inches to one side and 11 inches to the second side which gives me my 22. Now on the front of the cushions I need to measure back two inches like that and then line the mark at the back and the mark at the front up. It goes off there because it's very soft. This is the super soft foam that I use. I have a layer of the firm foam which I'm putting underneath this. Both pieces are an inch thick and because they're only an inch thick, that means that I can use my scissors to cut the foam. It's nice and easy. The other thing I'm doing is the firmer foam that I'm using, I'm making an inch smaller than the top. And that's so that this will fold over the sides and give a rounded look. I have some fabric left over from the headboard that I did for this lady. So I'm just going to cut a couple of one and a half inch widths. I think this might hide any problems at the back of the chair and if not I'm not losing anything. Now this one there's a watermark there so I know that's the top. I'm just going to pop these face together underneath here. It's on a 2.6 and I'm going to sew from the top corner to the bottom corner. Fold that over so it's face up. Find the next piece. That's the right side. Right sides together again at right angles. Now this doesn't matter if there's quite a few joins in it because it's going along the back of the chair. And it should be quite well hidden. That's the right side. That again is the right side down. If you have lines, it's always very awkward to decide whether everything is at right angles. It makes your eye not see things properly. Again, right angles, which doesn't look like it's right angles. I've got my grooved piping foot on. Here I'm just going to put the piping in the centre of the fabric, fold it around, which makes the flange, and then pop it underneath. Extend the stitch to the longest, which is a number five, and sew on down. Because I'm stapling this in, I usually put a wider flange on. It's going into a small area, so I don't want to put too much filler in there. Make sure your raw edges are together. When you come to a join, just separate them and then cut back to about quarter of an inch or within quarter of an inch of the seam. Open the seam out and fold over and continue sewing down. As you get closer, just make sure everything's still wide open. Some thicker fabrics just close over because there's not enough fabric there to keep it open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop glue across the back here 
I don't usually do it this way, but I really need to make sure that any of that original fabric is caught down. I'm going to fold that underneath and push it down on top all the way along and into position. It should actually take down any of those white bits of fabric. And if I think there's any up, then I'm going to use this and push that down and into place. There we go. It should just catch with a bit of luck. There we go. And then I'm going to also staple it. On this end, I'm just going to cut it a little bit over like that. Make sure that the piping comes to the end here where the back of the chair comes in. Just a wee tad more glue here. That is up and I want that down. Pull that across, pull that under like that and secure. Sometimes you just have to think outside the box. That should hold. And I'll do the same on the other one. I have a slight problem, as in this is the only piece of moiré that I have, and if I fold it in half, it will literally go from one end to the other. And I've got padding in here for the foam, so I need over half a width. I only have so far to go back. The other thing is that the pattern actually runs out for the last 12 inches, so I need to make sure that as much pattern of this is on the front of the chassis. So I have decided that I'm going to do one upside down like this, which means it comes forward, there is some pattern, but I can give it the width and then I'll turn it the other way and it should do the same on the other side. That's my theory anyway. Let's see whether it works. The front has to be 30 inches, which is there, and the front of the second one has to be the same. So that is why this is slightly at a funky angle. The shorter sides have to be at least 26, I think. It's going to be a bit awkward to get everything looking okay, but I think this is going to work. The lady only had a small piece of fabric left. I'm using it wisely, or as wisely as I possibly can. Just fold it along that line and cut along the fold like this. The right side is the side you see the watermark on, which is there, and the plain side is the back. I've eased it over just about an inch on that side, lined up the front here, and then lined up the back here. Now I'm going to try to keep the back as even as possible all the way along. It's handy because there's the lines from the weaving, that kind of helps. And then I'm going to pull this back, pinching that underneath, in the center and stapling it in place. Once I've done that, I'm going to pull out to the side, making sure that that stays as even as I possibly can make it to here. Lift the fabric over, staple in place. And the same on this side. Try to make it as even as possible into this corner, move the fabric and again in place. So I've cut my piece of back tacking. It goes to the inside of this here, to the inside on the other side of the chair. Push that back against the piping and then staple in place. This is the firm foam to go on. I'm going to center that like that, push it right to the back. And this is the softer one which comes over about half an inch on each side. Again, push it right to the back, pop it down the inside arms like that. And I'm gonna pull this over and see what it looks like. Now it goes all the way to the back and it hides that. So I'm going to put some Dacron over it and make sure that's really neat. Here's the piece that goes down by the arm of the chair. It really isn't long enough to be caught in. So what I've done on the others is to sew a length of fabric is about half an inch from the outside edge, like this. And all I'm doing, doing an overstitch to start off with, it has to be quite firm, and I do small back stitches all the way across, so it's nice and even. I could have sewn this on earlier at the sewing machine, but I really didn't know where it was going to come on here. Because when you're pulling the fabric in, it kind of alters the shape of the fabric so it's easier to do it in situ. Upholstery thread, tiny little back stitches all the way across at about half an inch from the edge and that will hold that. It's going to be pulled down under the chair between the chair seat 
and the webbing that's under there. So I'll push that down in a sec. Here we go, almost at the end. I'll secure it to the chair frame when I'm putting everything together. You don't often have to do this this way, but the fabric was really skimpy on how much I had. So I had to be a little bit creative and use the fabric that I had wisely. And this is one of the ways. I've used the leftover fabric from the piping. And then all I'll do is pop that all the way down between the fabrics there and on the other side. Now, as you can see, I've already stapled this in. I had a few problems with it, so I had to change my thought pattern. It also tells me where I need to pull this to. I have a centre mark here and also on the front of the chair, so I'm going to pull that in really tightly from the back. These marks should come over the front edge of the chair frame. Make sure that goes far enough there and that goes far enough there. Yeah. Just pull that in, there we go, to there. I'm going to pull it in tighter shortly and put a staple in. I'm going to work my way across, making sure that that looks almost even across here to the end. Just here to hold everything. And the same the other way. This is now pulled in steady front and back and if I pull either side it shouldn't move too much. Now this comes forward slightly so I'm just going to pop some more wadding behind there so that it just pulls out a little bit more to the back. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that underneath there like that for now so it pulls it in. Now here because I didn't go all the way to the edge of the chair I can pull that forward and then push that down into position and it gives quite a nice neat look on the back there and then secure it. Now because this has significant weft thread it's going to pinch so I'm just going to pull that down and forward there's nothing really to pull here, but I can hold it into position. It's going to make those lines. I am going to cut a length of back tacking like that. And I am actually going to cut it into half. So I can use half this side of the chair and the other half on the other side of the chair. This is the piece I'm going to use here, just about fit. And I am going to put a staple at the front end here so it doesn't wriggle too much. Although technically it needs to be pulled forward a little bit more. So I'm going to put it here. That's going to hold that. I'm going to come back to the back side here. So I'm going to fold that over and pull it back towards the back like that and that in. And push my card up against the side of the fabric. It's about quarter of an inch in from the front edge. That didn't go in very well. I'll have another go in a minute because I can take that out. I'm going to pull the fabric down slightly and I can feel the quarter edge along the front here. I'm going to put another one in and again push that down slightly. I'm not pulling it, I'm just pushing it down and put another one in. And again, it should, by using the card, it should prevent some of the ripples going in. It's not going to prevent all of them, just a few of them. Close the gap up a little bit. Again, push that down, pull that in, about a quarter of an inch in from the outside edge, like that. And put some more in. Let's see what it's doing here. That will just fold underneath as I come in. There we go. When you've put it together and made your adjustments, cut in to the side of the cardboard like this until you've got all of that excess fabric off and along here. Now I'm only using 8mm staples or 5 sixteenths for this because I'm only going through one layer of fabric and one piece of card. I don't need to have really big staples. And I'm going to secure the front here so it can't move anywhere. That means this one has to come out in a minute. Oops. The theory is to do that. A little ways back from that outside edge. I'm gonna go back here, push any wadding underneath. My stitching is in the wrong place. That's a bit of a pain. I think it'll work. By the time I've got the piping up there, it'll hide that. Yeah, it'll hide it because I'll push the piping up in here and that will hide that little problem. Because I've pulled it forward, I will just nick it a little bit not by very much it's 
maybe an eighth of an inch. Let me get my piece for here. It's only a short piece. Pull that out to the edge of the chair like that up to there and see if I can get that in. I might have to staple it and then take the staples out as I go. This is a bit dangerous. Ooh, just managed it. Well done. And then put the next one in. I don't like doing it like this because it's a little bit concerning for my fingers. Okay, so working on the front, if I pull this forward, it does actually come in a little bit more. So I'm going to take this pin out here, or staple. I call them pins because I'm pinning everything into place just for the time being. And here's my card, which goes all the way along. The centre is about here. Put that down and push that in. When it's in place, secure it. Now because this is going along the front I can actually pull it in in a straight line to start off with but I'm also pulling out to the side. This needs to come out too. Careful so you don't ruin the fabric too much. That pulls out to the side and down and into place and you can see that's going in without too many ripples now. And then I'll work along the other side in a second. Out, down and in. Push it in really hard so you'll hold it in place. This is all the fabric I've got left to do the piping. I could do it that way, but it's quite a firm fabric and I've got to go around a corner with piping. So I think what I'm going to do, I want it to be cut more on the bias. So if I cut this piece in half like this and fold from corner to corner, again, just cut on the fold. It doesn't have to be great. It just has to be cut. Once that's done, I'm going to then at two inch. Yeah, I'm going to do it at two inches. I need two long pieces and two short pieces, I think, out of each piece. I should have enough for both chairs without having to worry. I cut strips of this worry and I put a pin on the front because in this slide I really couldn't see which was the right side and the wrong side very easily. So my pin means I have to face that down and sew across. Fold that over in half, remove the pin. I've got my single piping foot on and this is a thin quilting fibre. Put my piping on and roll it over, but not very far. Extend the stitch to number five. Pop that underneath and the side of the piping fabric and quilting fibre runs along the side of the foot. I would get the Dacron style one because it's a lot looser than a cotton one. And I'm just going to go down all of one side. This is for double piping, so I've got to go down twice. You can have to adjust all the way down and keep it tight in there because the fabric will kick out slightly. Cut the seam back to within quarter of an inch. It's done the usual way of making piping up. Open up the seam like that. Put the liner down. Now I wanted it slightly wider and this isn't going to give it too much width but I need it to at least be a decent half inch wide when it's all put together. So just fold it all in all the way down. Because this is slightly uneven and it's a little bit bulky I'm going to cut back along here. So I run the bottom of the scissors on the back side and then cut down all the way along. I want to take some of that bulk out. As this has to be double piping, put that at the top here. The original one starts here, so I want the second one to start around the same place. Fold that under like this. This is why you need an extra quarter of an inch when you're doing it this way, because you want it tight. Hold that under my fingers, pop that under the piping foot like that. Leaving it on a number five, carry on sewing. You need it relatively tight, but you also need to make sure you've got that gap between the two and make sure it looks even. But because this was done on not quite a bias and it's not quite straight, it has a different way of wanting to go in. And just work your way down. Now, I haven't sewn all the way to the end. I've left it open just in case I need to add more to it. And I will, a little ways back, start cutting the excess fabric off. And again, do this all the way up. It looks quite neat now that it's all cut back. When you are putting piping on, I always make sure that the way it was wrapped is on the outside. 
this is just one of the things I do. Now at the top end here I'm going to undo a little bit so that all of that can be tucked in behind and make a nice join under here. It'll be hidden. If it's not brilliant it, it's not going to really be noticed. There's that. Even though I've got a double layer, just the fabric and cut that out like that. Make sure that that goes into place. Cut a little bit off of there too, just to thin it down. And a little bit off of there to thin it down. And then with the hot glue, I just put a little dab in there and across the top, just a little bit to hold everything in place. Need that to go in and over like that. Pinch it tight. And I'm going to measure along to just about an inch back from the corner. That's where I'm going to stop putting the glue. Pop it as far back under there as you can and across. I'm going to just scrape that off like that using my tack remover. Hold it firm. I need to bring this round. I kind of need to see where it's going to settle. It's going to come around here and I have all of this showing under here. I can't have any of that showing. So pull that back and trim anything that's going to show back as far as you can, especially the card. Okay, I've got the card hidden and then I've got to work on the fabric, but I might be able to get the fabric to glue when I put it in place. I think that's what I'll do. I'll see if I can take a little bit more back on the card and then I'm going to just put enough glue to get me to about there. Come round, sweep that fabric up and in and then push it down and into place. I'm going to work my way all the way along the front of the chair which of course is the easy part because it's nice and straight. And again I'm going to stop about an inch in from the outside edge there so that I can work it in. Now I tend to put it on both sides of the seam there. I always sweep it in from the side like that so if there's anything that I want to hide it's taken in and then down and press hard. So I've just got to come around this corner here with my inch allowance. Now before I get too far I'm going to bring this around and into here. So I'm going to cut about there so I've got enough to hide under the arm there. Let's see how that comes around first. That's actually pretty good. I'm going to glue it to about here. It comes in, there's nothing really stopping it. I will take that piece of card out there because it's a bit rucked up. That just means everything will go in a bit smoother. And there's some fluffy stuff that needs to come out. I'll just put my two or three inch of glue one around, kind of cross and in. Double piping really doesn't go around corners very well. It does if it's more on a bias, but I didn't have enough fabric to put a bias on here. Here I've got a little bit of glue, so I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. Take that out from under there. Now I'm going to work this in. Just like I did on the other side, I'm going to cut it back and make sure that all fits under. And then I've just got a small length to finish off this chair. It's a little bit of patience to do this. It's not hard. And again, I'll pull the fabric back like that and let everything else stay. And I think if I take it back to about there, it'll tuck in quite well underneath. Always check. By the time the fabric's wrapped around, it, it'll hide it. Remember to dab a little bit of glue on, just to hold everything in place, not much. The glue's quite hot, so you don't want to burn yourself when you're doing this part. It's quite unpleasant if you do. I did that the other day and ended up with quite a big blister on my finger. As long as that all hides in, especially on the outside, because you don't want that showing. Thank you for joining me on this project. I hope that I managed to impart a few little tricks. It still didn't go in as well as I'd hoped. I think she's going to be pleased with that. If you'd like to hear more from me, please subscribe and hit the bell button and a few thumbs up would be absolutely brilliant and then I know how I'm getting on. And in the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao.